Hello viewers, today for the initial checkout we have a Uniden 900 megahertz digital or the Digitan cordless telephone. This is the model EXL8901. This does have the original battery to it. This is the battery BT905, the nickel cadmium rechargeable battery. It's from 08 1999 and it is DC 3.6 volts at 600 milliamps and it was made by the GPI. Unfortunately it was made in the China but it does in fact still work. These GPI batteries were very good quality and it's not at all uncommon to see these still working well over two decades after their production. That was made in 1999, we're going into 2022. The batteries is going to be about 23 years old soon and it still works just fine. And it's kind of interesting because there's a lot to be said about rechargeable batteries and their lifespans. A lot of the ones made today, they don't seem to last as long as they used to. Now, I have a lot of computers from 10 to 15 years ago and the batteries still work perfectly fine. A lot of the lithium ion batteries like the Sony one, the Sony Info Lithium batteries from the early 2000s last for decades. And then you get ones today and it's like the stuff dies in a year or two and it stops taking a charge. And it's really just a matter of battery quality and charger quality and Uniden got these right. They had excellent slow charging circuitry and they seemed to choose the battery manufacturers carefully during this time and they used batteries that were really quite good quality. It's not at all unusual, in fact it's very common to find these telephones with the original batteries still in them. It's very seldom that I see replacement batteries within these phones. In the time that I've been using these phones, I've never really had a battery go bad. Even when I've used the original ones, they still they, they work fine. Even if you keep it on the cradle all the time, they still seem to work just fine. It has a very good float charge circuitry to it as well. So this is a Digitan model, which I have mixed feelings about the Digitan models. The spread spectrum ones are a whole different world. But these are not spread spectrum. These are just straight digital 40 channel manual channel changing telephones. I believe these were, were probably 40 channels. Um, here's the, the information on the back. This one is kind of unique because this was a long distance manager telephone. And this was a service that I highly doubt is still in existence. It was put out for a short period of time, I think it was fairly short anyways, um, and it, what it did was it, it, it was like some kind of a, a long distance service. You would call, call that number and then you could get some kind of a discounted rate on long distance calls. Of course it's kind of a gimmick because you could take that number that the button has programmed and you could call that same long distance service from any regular telephone. So in a lot of ways these were somewhat gimmicky. In fact I would argue that the digital concept was gimmicky in a lot of ways. There was some truth to what they claimed and there were certainly advantages to it. They claimed that the security was higher because you couldn't pick up a Digitan signal with a typical analog scanner. And while that's true there certainly exists equipment to pick up a Digitan transmission. It wouldn't be that difficult to do. They claimed that the range was better, although oddly enough I find that the range is worse. Not the spread spectrum ones, again those are a whole different scenario. The spread spectrum ones had exceptional range, it blew analog out of the water. But these did not. I find that the reception on these is much poorer than the analog units in the same form factor partially because of the way Digitan works. You know, when the signal starts to deteriorate, it starts clipping out. And if you have 
words getting dropped out of a sentence, you really can't carry the conversation because losing a single word can completely alter the meaning of the sentence. If you have an analog phone and you get towards the end of the range, you get a little bit of background noise, but you're not going to lose any of, of the words really until you get far out of the range. So in that sense, the analog is kind of better as well. Um, they also claim that the Digitan one sounded better, which of course was really not true. Analog always has and always will intrinsically sound better based off of the properties of sound waves. So with that being said, there were certainly some things I liked about these phones. I have found that you can generally use more than one of these in the same vicinity and they don't seem to interfere with each other. I have not found that to be true of the analog models. I have had pretty much impossibilities with using analog telephones of the same frequency in the same household. More than one typically causes all sorts of problems and renders them both unusable. These I've used two or three at the same time with not much trouble at all. A lot of these Digitan models had backlit buttons and they were backlit correctly because talk is backlit as well. And also I find that these are really enjoyable to talk on because the the side tone is quite nice and the pickup on the microphone is very good. It is much better than the analog models. That's really the only thing I don't like about the analog models in these form factors is that the pickup tended to be pretty poor and you had to talk very loud on those phones. On this one I don't find that to be an issue at all. The, the pickup seems to be very clear and very sensitive. So this is a basic model. It's kind of an unusual model because of the long distance branding but also because of the form factor. The Digitan models were typically more expensive marketed with more features and so this being a very basic model having no caller ID, no answering machine, no speakerphone it's kind of odd to see this model in this compact base uh, very featureless format with digital signal. It's just unusual. It's in pretty decent condition. It's got some scratching on the back from being put on the table does have the headset jack. The antenna is still good, which is becoming less and less common. It's got a decent amount of wear on it. You can see where it would sit on the cradle. It's kind of worn out around the earpiece. Same thing at the bottom there. I did always like the extended range branding on these. I thought that was pretty cool how it says it there. Although I do have to wonder if this was the extended range model, what in the world was the regular range model like? And I can't really think of any phones that Unin and sold that were not extended range. As far as 900 is concerned, pretty much every single one claimed to be extended range, including the compact ones, which was a form factor that really did not have too many long range models. It does have mute, which I guess is another feature that it's got going for it. The base is not natively wall mountable which is odd because I believe most of the analog ones in this form factor were natively wall mountable so you would have had to get the bracket for it which a lot of people never kept and would have had it obtrude from the wall kind of obnoxiously because those brackets they would give at least another half inch of depth to the phone and it's already a fairly thick base as it is only control we have on here is the dialing pulse or tone the DC, the 9, the volts, the input, and the telephone line in, which I will go ahead and connect the telephone line to. These had not a metal antenna on the base, it's, it's like a plastic and it's somewhat flexible. I think if you flex it much it would just break, but it's definitely not metal in there, it's probably just a piece of wire. The clatter ringer on these is a slightly different frequency than a lot of the other ones, which is odd. The flicker sounds to be about the same.
In fact, the frequency is a bit different between high and low. While very shrill and annoying, that in fact has a decent amount of volume to it, that flicker ringer. And these, of course, having no ringer on the bass, that loud ring on the handset is absolutely indispensable. The bass is in pretty decent condition, as other than the the wear at the bottom there from where it sits in the cradle. It's the hook for changing wall mount and table mount. The charging contacts need to be cleaned, especially on the handset. They're pretty oxidized, but that's easy enough to fix. There is a ringer switch for the handset on these. You can turn the ringer off, which is another feature these had over the analog ones. I don't think any of the analog ones had that feature where you could turn the ringer off on the handset. It was only just the volume adjustment. And it can sit in the cradle either way, which is kind of a useless feature in this case because there's no caller ID screen, so why would you ever want it to sit anything like that? I don't know. Well, anyways, uh, I guess for the sake of the video, we'll set it down like this so that you can see the the illumination of the buttons as it rings. I'll go ahead and switch the lights off and let's call it up. Can't really see where the button is. I guess I should have left the lights on first. Oh, that's very uneventful. I thought the thing would light up. I believe the ones with uh, caller ID do illuminate the buttons. So it has auto talk and it came on already because the charging contacts lost connection. The status and in, uh, in use lights are, are different on this one. It's got one for charging and one for in use. That's very atypical. They usually use the same light for status and in use. Okay, so the auto talk is working correctly. Let's go ahead and do a page. That's working, although it's very short-lived. That would not be long enough to find the phone if it was on the other side of the house. Alright, so let's go ahead and record a testing message with this telephone so we can hear how good the pickup is. Two new messages and two old messages. Message one. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a test of the unit in. 900 megahertz Digitan cordless telephone. I'm going to leave the studio now and traverse across the room. And we'll see. I, I think the range will, will get us across the room, but it definitely does not perform as well as, as the analog models do. I think it clipped out a little bit there. I kind of heard it. I just heard it clip out there again. So the range definitely is, is more limited on these than the analog ones. I've tested even the um, compact analog ones down here, and they usually make it most of the way across the room. But this, this probably wouldn't even fare that well across the entire house, because if I put the base upstairs and then I come down here, it's probably gonna have some clipping issues. So that was definitely one of the drawbacks of these phones, but I really enjoy talking on these because the side tone is fantastic. The analog ones, they just didn't quite have the side tone that I wish they did. Actually, that's, that's only partially true. It, it was really the full size, the full size handsets that didn't have a lot of side tone. The analog compact models, like the uh, 371, 370, and uh, I think it was a 376, the caller ID version of the 370. Those had a really good side tone, and those were analog, and the pickup was pretty good too. But of course, you had the, the range limitation on those. The range wasn't that great on those. But anyways, it would be interesting to compare the, do a range test of these side by side and see see how the uh, the analog ones compared to the Digitan ones. I think the analog ones would, would certainly outperform these. Okay, so I'm going to conclude this message now. I'm going to change the channel just so we can hear what that sounds like. Oops, that was the wrong button. Okay, the channel was just changed. I'll do that one more time. Okay, now I'll go ahead and hang up the telephone using the button. Message two. 
Okay, and this time I'll go ahead and hang up right into the base. End of messages. Okay, that was interesting. When I was at the other side of the room there, it was clipping out noticeably, but I didn't hear any clipping in the message, so... Or... Well, that's not correct. It sounded to me like it was clipping out because I could hear the side tone getting interrupted. I guess I should take the phone across the room there with it just on, uh, you know, playing a dial tone or something and see if it really is clipping out. Alright, let's see what the deal was with that. I'll go out here if I can, not breaking the antenna. I'm going to turn this thing on. Oh yeah, it's really clipping out over here. So that's odd. I guess the um, the transmission back to the base and the pickup of the base must be superior, which is kind of funny because with a lot of them it was the exact opposite. Generally speaking, I found that the when it comes to these phones, the transmission back to the base was worse than the base of the handset that was always with dual band phones I think I don't know I'm I don't remember I, I just don't remember being like this so I find that kind of odd all right um let's go over to the mains here and let's make an outside call I'll switch over to this camera so we can get a better audio of the phone itself Microphones on this thing. That was the microphone on the front. This is the one on the side. Christmas harvesting, and we're open every day, uh, right through Christmas Eve, nine till five thirty. But be here by four to harvest your own. I don't know if there's a difference in pickup quality or not. Probably just the stereo d uh, change. Anyways, sounds really good. I'll turn the volume of those to the lowest setting. You can venture out. No, the battery just died. Well, it was only on charge for like 15 or 20 minutes, so we'll uh, excuse that. I guess that will conclude the test. Uh, we were able to listen to it long enough to get a good, um, a good idea of the sound quality. It really sounds pretty good. All the buttons work perfectly fine. The backlighting is is good. Uh, these have a pretty good feel to them too. I I like the way these buttons are. So. Overall, this is a really good phone. I think the range is a bit limited. That could also just be because this is a very noisy environment over here. It's very possible that in a cleaner environment this would have substantially better performance.